We're live and I've got Melanie, someone else who likes smiling. And she's chosen this amazing song. I love this song and so many people have chosen it as well. Um, it's Three Little Birds. Singing don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing gonna be all right. Singing don't worry about a thing. Every little thing gonna be all right. Rise up this morning, smile with the rising sun. Smile, three little birds, the charm that does them. Singing sweet song, a melody is pure and true. Singing, this is my message to you. And I'm gonna stop there because the show is about you, Melanie not about the singing. Hello, Melanie Goodman. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. And how are you? Buzzing, but you know that. <laughs> yes, I do. I do. Uh, my, thank you for having me. Uh, no, no, no. Thank you for saying yes. And the very first question I always ask my guests is, why did you pick that song? Well, it's about three little birds. And I am an early riser, so I am always up with the lark in the morning um i i'm not a big sleeper i never have been and it's not like a humble brag i'm i only you know i work 23 hours a day and don't sleep it's actually just that i don't need much sleep <laughs> so i um i tend to um be up first thing in the morning i do quite a lot of my day actually first thing in the morning before everyone else is up um i've got i've got certain clients in other parts of the world so it works well with them they can go on business whatsapp at sort of first six o'clock in the morning and they'll get a response um, so it, it actually works well for me business wise. Personally, it works really well for me. Um, and I'm just a morning person. So I have lots of energy first thing in the morning. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Do, do, uh, this is a personal question. We've only been on for two minutes. What, do, do you have a significant other? Do you have a partner? I do, I do. Yeah. What do they think about you getting up early? And the reason I ask, my <laughs> wife despairs because I'm exactly like you. I, five o'clock in the morning is nothing to me. And she oh, absolutely despairs. Him. All right. OK. He okay. Hates it because, yeah, I, I'm up. I'm like showering and everything at like just after 5 30 and but I do got I mean uh, my office is actually in the top of my house and my I've got three kids of varying ages and they um they just ignore it, it doesn't bother them but yeah my husband although my husband does now have um earplugs so he <laughs> so he does which is probably strategic for, for a number of reasons um but uh yeah he, he just he's used to it well i've been married quite a long time so he's just used to it oh yeah me, me too but I, I i i don't i don't shower first thing in the morning god my wife would murder me i i i creep around like the quietest mouse but the trouble is when you creep around the house like the quietest mouse and you open up the the the, the thing the, the tea caddy it's like the loudest noise in the world isn't it Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid they do get stuck with the coffee machine going off, and um, I probably actually now now I've heard that, and now I'm really selfish. But I do, but I do, um, yeah, I do get. I'm like fully ready for the day by sort of quarter to six. So, um, but I don't enter the dishwasher. So there you go. I don't, oh I no, I, do, I, don't, I don't. I don't do that. You cannot open the dishwasher quite quite. I, I would get lynched by the rest of my house. So as much as I might like to, I don't do that. So it's just coffee machine then i'm back then I'm all back. right now we're being really honest what what about the end of the day what sort of time do you go to bed uh, about 11 o'clock so between 11 and 12 yeah i told you i don't need that sleep. oh my goodness <laughs> eight o'clock in the evening eight o'clock in the evening i'm not much used to anybody <laughs> uh, no, no well, i i so the way i structure my day is i do i i will generally not be working between about four o'clock unless I've got a late call between about four o'clock and eight o'clock because I have family a family time. so that's yep. so my family time so you know I, I've got kids who come home from school and I, I make dinner etc um but then I'll often do some bits um sort of later in the evening um I'm not like a huge tv in fact I'm not really a tv person at all so and I find it really difficult to sort of sit still so and and it's my it's also my social media time actually so um but like my personal social media time, not not necessarily my LinkedIn time. So I, I will catch up with people. So it's sort of social time, actually, if I'm not working. 
but but I tend I don't find I've got enough hours in the day unless I go to bed quite late as well because I, I work a substantial work day so um wow yeah just to put wow. everything in I end up going to bed quite late so oh my goodness I might even have a nap later on you know because <laughs> because oh, well, so I, I went, we, we saw we went to the movies last night and and so we were, we were in bed really late last night so uh, yeah anyway look we've got some we've got some people here brenda miller's in the house brenda Miller, sorry uh all the way from uh detroit out walking the dog we're on a dog walk with brenda how cool is that hi brenda <laughs> and and john who brought us together so uh yeah john, john runs uh espresso so we're, we're both members of that Are you going to bath i am Oh. Yes, I can't wait because I got COVID for the last meetup. I couldn't I had to cancel because I got COVID like the day before, which I was gutted about. Um, so yeah, I can't wait. The oh, fantastic, John, John. If 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 the matey event is open to anybody, put the link in. If not, put the link in to join the espresso group because uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's going to be some cool people there. Excellent. Uh, hi, Pavel. Nice to see you. And hello to Antonia. Do you know, we've been chatting for five minutes and we still don't know who you are and what you do. So come on, tell us. OK, so, you know, my name, Melanie Goodman. Um, originally, by original profession, um, I was a property finance lawyer. Um, haven't practiced for quite a while, as I, as I already said to you. Um, I've been actually doing um, business development and um, marketing for the last about 15 years. Um, so a lot of my clients are in financial services or in law just because that's the nature of my original background. So obviously I'm, I'm quite a favorite with those sectors. Um, and yeah, so I started Trevor Down, which is um, my company back in 2017, um, having worked doing business development and LinkedIn marketing for a law firm for about eight or nine years as director there. Um, and then I, I started Trevisan and um, yeah, we've gone from strength to strength. So I think a lot of people know my purple branding by now. Um, and I'm now back living in the UK because I was living in Switzerland for 16 years. So I'm now back living in London. So back to wow. my hometown. Wow. Oh, so do you miss chocolate? I don't because we used to get Cadbury's imported to Switzerland. <laughs> Basically, any visitor that we had, we used to have, bring us Cadbury's. I know like, oh we live in the land of lint, but bring us Cadbury's chocolate. So, um, yeah, no, I, I definitely, I, I don't miss the, I don't, I don't miss the chocolate. Maybe Toblerone, but it, to be quite honest, Toblerone in London is cheaper than it is in Switzerland. So, wow, that's yeah. hilarious. That's hilarious. So, um. <laughs> Yeah, lawyers, and I and I, I work with um, accountants, and they're not your natural marketing types, are they? So, what what sort of challenges are you seeing your clients having when it comes to business development? I think it's actually the fear. I think that professionals like accountants and lawyers, they have a fear, which I wrote a post about. I think it was last week. Um, about firstly usually creating that first post if they haven't posted at all but it's the it's the fear of what their peers will think um what their um those senior to them in their companies will often think um you know what clients will think so you know they're very very cautious um of, you know especially with the regulation etc as to as to how, you know what they're posting and I, I would say sometimes overthink it you know sometimes i'm just like to do it just, just mm, post mm, it like mm. there's nothing in there that's controversial you know and what's the very worst that can happen i always say to people the very worst that can happen is you hit the edit button if there's a typo and you can edit it and you're not nowadays you're not even penalized by linkedin if you edit a post it used to be that your reach was penalized but it, that, that's not even the case anymore so and really worst case scenario if something goes horribly wrong you just delete the post so and it's sort of contrary to what people think. I think people think that when they press post, the whole world at once is going to be looking at that post. And it's actually, do you know what? It's like, you've only got a network, probably a lot of them of like 500 people. And it's only going to be a few people out of that that even see it. So especially when you start. So, you know, it feels like you're going like, it's like, you know, you feel like you're sort of going on stage at the London Palladium, but actually not, you're just like, playing to a little corner pub <laughs> it's like you know it, it, you haven't got a huge audience to start with so I think that that's like the main hurdle for people when they start out and then it becomes once they are comfortable with posting it becomes accountability how do you fit 
regular posting into your work schedule, into your day. Um, Because we will go with the fact that most people aren't getting up at five in the morning and aren't you know, working to level of work So with an average person, when you've got client work, which I mean it's something that we all that we all have client work as well. I mean uh, I mean the majority of my day is actually spent doing client work. Um it's not all spent on um you know commenting on people's posts on LinkedIn and engaging and a certain amount is my own business development of course. Um but the majority is spent working for clients on clients accounts and with clients etc. Um, and so I think that that's what people struggle with is that even if they do the first couple of posts, then it's like, oh, another two weeks have gone past and I haven't, you know, I haven't got around to posting again. So I think keeping accountable is really important on LinkedIn. Just for, for well, from the terms of the app, you know, when you see the algorithm that it will promote you if you're a regular um, creator on LinkedIn. Um, and, you know, your post will go out further. And obviously, it's great for your branding. More people know you, they see you, they like you. It's the no like trust thing. Um, but um, it's actually having a schedule, time blocking and staying accountable so that you, you don't just have a burst and do it for a month and then never do it again, which I know is like people have challenge, do LinkedIn challenges where they post every day for a month. But then what I've actually heard, it's not it's not something I've, I've hosted. I, I, I don't want to host one, but um that people then they're almost burnt out by the end of it because they, they even if they finished it and they've done it then they can't even face posting again so i think it's about having um having a schedule that that fits in with your lifestyle and that is manageable and that isn't overwhelming because it i think just it's a never turning machine linkedin and or any social media platform and it it, it just becomes overwhelming if you don't keep it sort of under control and keep it as a part of your day rather than letting it you know take over your entire being which it which it can yeah because you, you spend you spend a little bit of time on linkedin don't you i, I do spend a little bit of time <laughs> more because of the, the nature of my business um and I, I would never suggest to people that they spend the amount of time that i do on linkedin um if that's not their core business um, because it would, would probably not be the most productive use of their day. Um, but that said, I mean, you, you just, it needs to be significant enough part of your day that you haven't, that you make an impact. Um, you know, uh, there's no point having, you know, a, a sort of dormant account that just sits there waiting for people to come to you. I mean, if, if your account is properly set up, your profile, then hopefully people will come, you know, they, they will come to you, you know, they'll search and you'll come up higher um, in search engine um, rankings in, in the listings um, if you are set up properly um, but you can't really rely on that as you know you need to be actively engaging on, with other people on the platform and also people they they learn what you're like as a person your personality um, which I don't want to mention like chat GPT but that but you can't replace that by engaging as yourself and taking the time to do that it, with people's posts I mean it's it's patently obvious when someone has crafted um, a response themselves or whether they've you know it's it's ai generated um it's usually it's usually pretty obvious so that's that's really um th that's really key is to sort of engage authentically as yourself yeah absolutely it's like it's like turning around and, and going to a networking event but sending a proxy for you yeah. So, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm, re yeah. I, I'm representing Melanie today. Yeah. So, you know, we'll just, we'll just chat and just pretend I'm Melanie. That's never <laughs> yeah. going to work. I probably, <laughs> I've probably, I've probably got the smile. I've probably got the smile, but, but you know, I've, I've never been a lawyer. I've never lived in Switzerland. I've never played the piano, all these sorts of things that, you, you, you know, only, you know, then you, you, you're, you're not getting, Melanie's personality you're getting my personality and, and this is this is what we need to do is we we need to and, and, and I and, and I bang home about it all the time it's all about authenticity because people want to know the real you don't they I hope so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you, you know they do you know they do um yeah. so so I'm a lawyer I've got over my fear of posting now I've now heard that I need to be doing some video what do I do now please Melanie <laughs> so you can either contact Ashley and you could have a and you can do a live. Um no, so um when you say video, as in video 
on LinkedIn or or streaming it to other well, and, and he, well, so 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 look, you know, there's there's Instagram, there's TikTok. You have to do video, but there's Instagram and there's LinkedIn and there's yeah. Facebook, and and we all know you you know you and I both know that that you get more of someone's personality by watching them on video. So you turn around to your lawyer or accountant and say, look, you need to do some more video. And, and you know, we've had a struggle just trying to get them to write something. So how do we help? How do we help people talk to camera? So I usually say to people, you don't need any huge amounts of equipment. Start with your mobile phone. Because nowadays, most people have got an iPhone and these are perfectly suitable for making um, short, sharp videos. Um, even better if you, if you order a stand off Amazon, but otherwise, you know, just do it on your video. And then there's, um, I mean, I use an, I use an app called Subtitle, um, which allows you to edit the video on your desktop, but it's really, really user friendly. And by the way, I'm not affiliated, so I've got no affiliate link with them, but they're called Subtitle. It makes it very easy to add captions. So your videos are in immediately inclusive. Um, add a headline, add your logo, and you just don't, you really don't need to be techie at all to use it. Um, and then you've got, you've got your video done. I mean, um, another way, the, the other app that I would suggest, which is actually even easier, is to use Loom, the Chrome extension Loom. Um, so people who aren't familiar with it, L-O-O-M, and it's, um, it's dead easy and it records your screen. And that's what I use generally to, to make tutorials. So um, I will do sort of LinkedIn how-to tutorials. Um, I do them regularly and then I just upload them to YouTube afterwards. But I'll often make them just using Loom on my desktop. I mean, I, I did one yesterday. It literally took me about three minutes to, to rattle it off, you know, just recording my screen. And then actually I did go a little step further and put it into subtitle and make it look pretty. But you don't, you don't even have to do that. And actually people... Or they're not always after a, a hugely polished final product. I mean, you know, yes, I, I have got a marketing video for my, for my company, which I did not make and, look, you know, looks pretty zappy. But you don't need that on a daily basis to show your credibility. If I'm doing a LinkedIn tutorial, no one needs to have, you know, intros, outros, zooming in, zooming out. If, if, the, if what the content is valuable to people, that's what they're watching the video for. You know, that, that's what's taking up their time. So that's what they're going to remember is, is whether they learn something on it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so Pavel's saying here that um, it, it is important that you plan time for social media. Um, is there a specific time that we should be doing our social media or should we... Um, just do it as and when, or should we plan it and should it be every day? Yeah, so I would definitely say every day is the is optimal. If you can run every day and do something, it's optimal. But not if you're going to post utter, utter rubbish just so that you get something on, onto LinkedIn, then that just ruins your credibility. So so I, I caveat by that by saying you're better off to post twice a week something that's of decent quality than just sort of, um, you know, post any some sort of like inane motivational quote just so that you get something on there in the morning. Um, so... It should be quality. Um, depends where your audience is geographically as to the time of day that's going to work best for you. And when your audience are on LinkedIn. So there's no point, you know, if you have a particular, if you work in a particular industry where they're, you know, they, they tend to all be um all be night workers and then you start you know you, you start posting at eight o'clock in the evening you're not you know you're not going to get any traction um your post will disappear by the time they're on linkedin so you want to be same as like i find for, for myself i never post in the middle of the afternoon because nearly everybody that i would want to engage with or potential clients they're going to be at work in the middle of the afternoon so my, my post isn't going to go very far so for me and it's actually the same for most people that i work with the optimal time is first thing in the morning so i I don't mean actually at five in the morning. I was just going to say, what do you call, <laughs> what you and I call first no, thing is totally different to time. So about eight o'clock in the morning, somewhere between 7.45 and 8.15 is normally where my posts go out. Scheduling is a game changer. Um, although I don't really like that word game changer. I just said it this morning in one of my posts. <laughs> well, I don't really like, but it is actually, it is a life changing um, tool. Um, is scheduling. If you, there's the, it, there's the sort of um, native internal scheduling feature that LinkedIn have introduced, which works well. Um, but if you want something with a bit more pizzazz, um, I would suggest using an external platform to 
to schedule and I mean I could I could name loads of them on here um anyone feel free to um message me if you want some um, advice as to the ones that I've that we've tried I mean I've, I've tried quite a few um some of them allow you to you know have a design element in them format the posts etc so some of them are quite zappy um but definitely it's, it, it, time blocking and scheduling will actually so having um a system in place will um basically save your sanity <laughs> because I mean I, I post at least once sometimes twice a day if i was doing all that on the hoof i would have a breakdown um but because i know at the beginning of the week and i, I normally encourage people to have almost like um a well to have a content strategy so i know that on a monday i generally post a, a pdf a document post tuesday wednesday thursday are sort of standard posts with an image um, and usually I have a nicely designed image to go with it um, because I have planned it in advance so I know what's going to be there. Um, and then Friday I have LinkedIn FAQs, which often people will send me questions or things that have come up in the week. Um, and then I will put them on the frequently asked questions on a Friday and answer them. So we do some different topics every week. And then weekends I usually keep for my sort of selfie posts or more personal posts um, where they're not necessarily sort of LinkedIn orientated or you know, I haven't necessarily, they're not completely business related. Um, and so I, I tend to keep those when people are a bit more relaxed on the weekends and sort of less in work mode. But that's just my, that's that's what works for me. Um, and I, because I know what's going out when I tend, you know, I don't feel like, oh my gosh, you know, what am I going to post tomorrow? I know, I know what's going to go out. And, you know, I have, a, I have it in advance. And it's normally that that's what I would tell people to do. No, perfect. Love that. Um, Samuel's saying that uh, he completely agrees. He always feels pressure on himself to poke regularly, but ultimately it comes down to, do I have something valuable to say? I was chatting to someone the other day and they're posting every single day. And they said, well, you know, you know some, sometimes you must, must struggle with coming up to say. And he turned around to me and he said, yes, I, I, I sit here and I think, what crap can I send out today? And I'm thinking, if you're thinking it's not very good, then what are we thinking? So, so what you said earlier, twice a week, two quality posts every single week is 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 amazing. And because people aren't posting much on LinkedIn, that's better than you know most of the people on there. John, well, just, John, I'm just going to say to play devil's advocate. Also, that there is the side that often people think that what they have to say isn't valuable. It's a bit of imposter syndrome. Yes. You know? And where actually people do want to hear from you. Actually, what you've got to say, even if it's, you know, it's a bit of noisiness. Tell us about your experience with a client last week. Because actually, I'm quite happy to hear about that. You know, I don't just want to read the news or just want to hear a change in legislation or just, you know, so it could be, you know, I mean, I'm not that interested in like the sort of Instagram type post just because I can go on Instagram for that. But, but you know, I do want a little bit of insight into what someone's doing outside outside the office or you know or their experience and how they dealt with it so um i think that sometimes what you think isn't valuable actually other people other people do so sometimes i've posted a post and i've actually thought um oh it could be a bit boring this post and then it's you know it's got like thousands of you know thousands of views and people are discussing it i'm like oh, okay like i didn't know that linkedin skills were really that interesting um yeah. but you know it, it's surprising what uh, what catches people's every day is a school day melanie isn't it you, you learn you learn so much now john's john's just got some links here for us so he's saying that uh subtitle uh, subtitle yeah. is uh subtitle.com so well worth using and also loom and vidyard and he's also got the link here for the matey tickets mm -hmm. now this is a, an event up in bath in november um and, and john's going to put all the the details in there so you can have a look later um but yeah we'll be there won't we john will be there and i'm just yeah, trying to think who else People who else has said they're coming? Yeah. Um, so um, you said you've got something coming up. Um, is it Link Tank, did you say? I have. I finally, it's taken months and months um, to launch. Yes, I have a platform called the Link Tank, um, which is done for you. Content, business development resources, blog posts, checklists, social media strategy, planners, um, in a huge library where you can pick and choose just what you want so you don't get lumbered with all the bits that you don't want and it's not subscription based so you will not get tied in you can literally say I want to buy the kit that shows me how to set up webinars and everything I need to know about webinars or you can buy the 
um, you know, you, you can buy the blog posts that are already done for you and just edit them. So it's all done for, it's basically done for you, productivity, time-saving um, resources. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. So, yeah. so I've just, I've just set up my law firm and the last thing I want to do when I set up a law firm is social media, but I know I need to do it. So now I can come to you and you'll just do it all. For, you'll do it for me or you give me the, no, so, well, yeah, that's, 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 that's not my business, but this is, um, no, this is a platform where you can, um, literally go in and choose the resources that you need. So if you need um, a social media policy for your small for your small business because you're taking on you know a couple of staff and you want them to have a social media policy, um, there's one created which you can literally rebrand for your own firm and you know you change the names on it. So it's a lot of editable documents, um, which especially good for SMEs. It's 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 been built. The platform's been built with an SME um, in mind or a, a marketer. Oh, that's well, people who actually don't, yeah people who don't know about marketing don't want to create their own resources don't know how to they can just go in and take them brilliant oh that's that's great but you do other you do other things as well for people don't you you, you actually help them on one-to-ones and groups yeah and no like exactly that. so i do work with people on an ongoing like a monthly basis one-to-ones you know like linkedin training or marketing strategies done for them um so this is this is different this is a different platform so yeah, the Link Tank is a different platform to Trevor's Am, which is my mainstay business. No, oh, fantastic. Um, so what do you think is the best content to be putting out there to get people to really know what I'm doing? You know, I'm a, I'm a lawyer, and and you know, what what's what's the best sort of content? Because some someone told me that I need to be posting photos of my dog, and someone else has told me that I've got to do, you know, law stuff, and then someone else says I've got to talk about, um, you know, what wh where I went on holiday. So what what is the best sort of content that I, I should be putting out if I'm a lawyer? Well, I always think for credibility, you want to become known as an expert in your niche. So I would normally say to people to, to I, mean, um, I mean, most lawyers do have some sort of niche or if even if you're in finance, you're normally in a particular area of finance or what, whatever industry you're in, you normally do have some sort of speciality. And I would normally, especially, at, especially when you start off, put out content that shows your knowledge, it showcases, um, it, it grows you in credibility because it will showcase your expertise um, rather than. I'm not saying don't put out anything which is you know a bit sort of frivolous but I would say that for the 10% of your posts whereas 90% of them should be about what you do because that's that's ultimately how you want people to remember you for what you do I mean there's you know if I write I don't know if I write about I don't know a trip that I went on yesterday uh, that, that's not something I want people to remember me for it's just a, a, as an aside so if I did that once a week that's fine but the rest of the time, I, you know, I want to be remembered for what I know about, which is which is LinkedIn, <laughs> and not, um, you know, not something that you know where I went on holiday, or whatever. So, so that those those posts are good, but I, you know, that they, they, they should be the minority. You should be posting, and and I think you've also got to go with what, what you're comfortable with. So, as I said to you, you know, don't post a video every day if that's not what you're comfortable with. Post a, a document, post a PDF. If you know, if you're more of a, if you're more of a writer, I mean, I prefer, I prefer written, um, written um, content. Um, so, it, but it's what you feel comfortable with. So I try not to be pressurized by, you know, doing things which I'm not comfortable with. You know, I, I have dabbled in TikTok, etc. But I actually don't really, and this is a reason for it. I don't do it on a regular regular basis because it's not, it's not my comfort zone, and I don't feel it's actually um, where I come across best. So, you know, I'm not naturally like singing you dancing person. So I don't, I, I don't really want to be making TikToks. It's not. And it, and it doesn't also fit particularly well with my with my image. So and, and my the brand I built. So oh, know, great. I think, I think great you answer. Choose yourself. Uh, great answer. Alberto has got a question for you. Uh, we do not all live in the same time zone. So how do you deal with that in terms of times for posting? Great question, Alberto. Schedule them. <laughs> so, use use, use so, a scheduler. Yeah. yeah, I would use a, definitely use a scheduler. So if you, if you know that you're going to be asleep when all your, um, you know, when all your audience are online, schedule the post to go out then. The only problem, of course, with doing that, and I would just say this, is that you do really want to babysit your post to a certain extent. 
So if everybody makes comments in the first couple of hours and you're not online, that's not really going to boost your post. So you do really want to try and do it um, at a time when you can be around. I mean, look, real life happens and it happens to all of us. Sometimes I'll post and then I've got to go out and I, and I can't sit around, you know, waiting for people to comment on my post. But in an ideal world, um, you would post at a time where you do have, say, an hour that you can just be around if you're lying in bed just to answer the comments. Oh, brilliant answer. Brilliant answer. Um, Melanie, <laughs> we've gone way past 15 minutes. I knew, <laughs> I knew, I I knew the time. I knew the time would absolutely fly. I've got one more question for you. But before I do that, I'm going to uh, give a shout out to my guests next week. Next week. I've got a movie star coming on on my show. So uh, Neil Malarkey uh, is, is an improv improvisation maestro. He's also a, an author. He's also a public speaker. And he's also uh, been on TV and in movies. So I'm looking forward to having a good old chat with him uh, next week. So that'll be ne- that'll be great fun. Um, but back to you, Melanie. My my last question. I always ask my guests this: is what advice would you give your 16 year old self? To Go for a career that you love and not that you think will make you the most money. Definitely. Because when you have to work in something every day, you really want to be, you really want to be happy to go to your desk in the morning and not have that horrible sinking back to school feeling. So I I would definitely say to try as much as you can to go down a career path that brings you joy and that actually makes you smile um even if it's not maybe the most lucrative for you um because i know that a lot of people feel you know that feel that that's not the way to go but i think it's really important really important to love your job yeah um i'm i I'm, i guess i know the answer to this but you love yours don't you i do i really do i do for lots of reasons like not just because of social media but like flexibility etc um yeah, I, I, and I like being my own boss. So. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, Melanie, you've been an absolutely superstar today. It's been lovely having a chat. You're going to have to come back because um, that was so yeah. much fun. Thank you to everybody for all your questions and your comments. Uh, Melanie, thank you. Cheerio. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. You get out what you put in. Never going to lose, never going to win.